I'm Capriato, the Service Aftermarkets Podcast Pioneer, with the gold standard of aftermarket business podcasts. Join me for aftermarket insights as we advance the aftermarket. And as always, know that you'll learn just one thing. Find us on your favorite podcast listening app and RemarkableResults.biz or on my YouTube channel. Hey everybody, Carm Capriato, good to have you here. Always appreciate your support and your loyalty to the uh, Aftermarket's premier podcast, Remarkable Results Radio. Hey, don't forget, we're going to be at Asta, Tracy and I, September 26th through the 28th, 2024. It's in Raleigh. Great group, Asta is. AstaExpo.com It's going to be a huge event this year. Please consider uh, getting your butt down there and get some great technical and business management training. Hello, Nate. Hey, how are you, Carm? I'm great. Winston's complete service, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. How you doing uh, in Cuyahoga Falls? Doing really well. All is good. Interesting story here. Nate's here because he ha- <laughs> you really have a great story. And we love to tell stories. I'll tease the audience. Listen, Nate used to have a great business with a partner. And that had a change. And Nate pretty much got up. I'm just guessing. I'm going to use maybe my words, not yours, Nate. You can fix me along the way here. But he got up against the wall and he said, hey, I got to do this on my own. Yeah, putting it mildly and putting it in a nice term. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Of course, I like to do things nice. (laughs) And so he's out as a solopreneur after being in business, I don't know, 16 some years, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, about 16 years, yes. 16 years, had a decent business going, but had a partner that wasn't quite meeting, I guess, either who knows whose expectations, but he he made a decision to get out and open his own shop. You've been only at this, what, maybe six months? Yeah, six months this week, you got it. Six months this week. It's amazing how we remember those anniversaries, isn't it? (laughs) Yes, it is, yep. And he's still solopreneuring, so he's doing everything. And a lot of us in the industry can dream or imagine that We've all been in that position once before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So part of what we want to find out from Nate, which is why I think this is a fascinating episode, is tell us about the partnership. Tell us maybe if you're willing to share how you got out and, of course, what your plans are to get back up and on your feet and hire some people and rock and roll. So I'm going to open the stage up to you, man. (laughs) Thanks. I appreciate it. As a lot of people in the industry know and in my community that I've had a partnership for the last 16 years, it was good for, I want to say, the first six months, I want to say. But after that, it was just, even during the six months, it was just very hard trying to work together, trying to see eye to eye, be on the same page and things like that. There's definitely been many times that I wanted to quit which I have, but I'd come back after a couple of hours after I went for a walk and tried to cool down and things like that. I definitely got all my ducks in a row, built up a good business plan over a good couple of years, acted on it. And then towards the end of 2023, there was just a lot of things boiling up in the business aspect of things between the partners, me and my partner. I just couldn't take it anymore. Let me stop you for a moment and ask you, how long were you in a partnership? 16 years from day one. It was. It Mm -hmm. was 16. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, That's a long time to go to feel like a punching bag. Oh, yeah. And that's what it was the whole time, practically. There was numerous reasons why I had to grow enough courage to break up the partnership and just figure things out and just plow through and go on my own. Gutsy decision to do something like that. I mean, I I love the word courage. It's a powerful word in our in our industry today for people to muster up enough courage to sometimes look in the mirror and say, hey, uh, I've got to fix me or I've got to fix Mm -hmm. certain aspects of my business. Mm -hmm. I love the word courage. Yeah, it is, you know, because it's hard. I didn't want to start over because I have a family that relies on me, my income and my hard work. So for me to start over, it's very risky because I have a wife and four kids that I got to provide for. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to leave because I got an income, I have security, I have the jobs, I got the clients coming in. Why would I want to leave and go somewhere else? I'm already set. But my mental illness and my mentality was really downgrading. 
I would be going home angry, upset, complaining to my wife all the time about my partner. And I just couldn't do it anymore. And now for the next, last six months, I go home praising to my wife how great life is now. And mm. how great it is being an only business owner, solo entrepreneur. And I'm happy. That, that thing is sinking in to me pretty heavy emotionally into my heart that uh, you made that gutsy move. And now you've never been happier. Truly. And a lot of my clients had come over to my new business from the old shop and they see a huge dramatic difference from what I was like over there, miserable and angry all the time to where I'm stress relieved now I'm stress free now. And they can tell that I'm more calmer and more collected. Interesting that they saw the difference, mm -hmm. Nate, but you weren't able to hide it at the old business. No, I had to put a front. I had to act all happy up at the front. All right, but, was it a, but it was a phony front? Nine out of 10 times, yes. Ah, yes. that's what they saw. That's what they mm -hmm. saw. I mm -hmm. see. This man's smiling, but it doesn't seem genuine. <laughs> right, correct. Yep. Got it. So now they come over to your place and they see the real Nate Winston. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Okay. Warning signs. Help us understand there's, there's a ton of partnerships out there and some of them are just on fire and they were just mm -hmm. meant to be. Mm -hmm. And maybe some are struggling. Warning signs would be like if your partner simply doesn't care or shrugs his shoulders a lot, doesn't have a lot of character or doesn't have a lot of enthusiasm or a drive or a go-getter, you know? I also think the other part of the thing with the partnership between me and my partner versus other partners is there was a huge age gap. We had a 22 year age gap between us to where he's in a different state of mind of retiring and things like that, slowing down. Well, I'm in my prime age of, Hey, I got 30 more years to work before I can even think about retiring. Let's go, 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 go. And I'm a worker. I like to work all day long. I don't like to sit down too much and things like that. So you both really need to have a game plan and execute the game plan. Yeah. What made you want to do this with, quote, an older individual? We met at a uh, factory. And so he saw my go-get attitude or my go-get charisma, you know, in my car that I like to tinker with and stuff like that. And so he had just asked me, hey, do you want to let's start a business. We worked together and he asked me if I wanted to start a business and car repairs. And I was like, all right, sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds like fun. So that's how we got started. He was my boss and at the uh, factory that we worked at. And this was back in 2007. I got it. So it reminds me, wow, this is a great opportunity to stop and ask <laughs> Nate Winston these questions. So Nate, if someone wants to do a partnership, what would be the key questions to ask an individual before you sign on the bottom line? A couple of things. One, ask lots of questions and make sure you are both on the same page of where you want to go in life. What are your goals in business? And make sure they are lined up with your core values inside. That's the first thing. And second thing, that dotted line, make sure you sign it and make sure it's looked over and make sure you have lawyers and attorneys involved with it. And I say that sternly because I can't tell you how many times I have tried over 16 years to try to make up a buy sell agreement, a partnership agreement and things like that. We'd make it up, but my partner would never sign anything. Oh, okay. Nothing. He said he would, but he just never did. It's all talk. 15 all years talk. of talk. I can't tell you the amount of books I have written pages I've written with business plans I've written and he would go along with it. The action would never move past the meeting at all. Okay. It's a great idea. Great idea, but no movement, no, Correct. no responsibility, no buy-in. Uh, I mean, Correct. he did it just to make you happy camper. So you yes. would move on. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Carm. Yes. That's it. A hundred percent in my heart. That's how I feel. Wow. Yeah. All right. The Napa Now event is a national ownership workshop for our valued auto care members centered around business building training from industry leaders. Now, it's not just about owning a shop. It's about owning your future. 
Join Napa April 15th through the 17th, 2025 at the Venetian Resort in the heart of Las Vegas, known for its vibrancy, energy, and entrepreneurial spirit. At the event, ignite growth through business building masterclasses from leaders across multiple industries focused on expanding business opportunities. Now, masterclass topics include future-proofing your business, mastering emerging technologies for growth, leadership dynamics, inspiring, engaging, and driving success, shifting tides, understanding evolving consumer behaviors and your bottom line, and young leaders' lasting legacies, mastering succession planning for future growth. Foster collaboration with other like-minded Napa Auto Care members and store owners. Stop at supplier studios for training, visit Auto Care vendor partners, and finally, Join us in celebrating 100 years of Napa Auto Parts, along with kicking off the next 100 years of partnership. There will also be exclusive giveaways. There are many incentive opportunities to offset the cost of this trip, including auto care program earnbacks, and beginning in October, earn up to $1,500 with pre-show supplier training to prepare for the supplier studio training sessions. The Napa Now event is a national ownership workshop for our valued auto care members centered around business building training from industry leaders. Now, it's not just about owning a shop. It's about owning your future. Join Napa April 15th through the 17th, 2025 at the Venetian Resort in the heart of Las Vegas, known for its vibrancy, energy and entrepreneurial spirit. Get ready to grow, connect and celebrate. This is an exclusive event limited to the first 2,000 auto care members. Packages are going fast. If you're interested in attending, contact your servicing Napa store or Napa salesperson. I'm really feeling for you as to not only the warning signs, but I I just go back to really trying to hire good quality people to bring into a good quality culture in a business. And -hmm. you've got to ask the right questions. And one of them may be, we are going to have a buy agreement. Do you agree with that? And even if he says yes, that needs to be part of a partnership agreement. And if he won't sign that, if he won't sign anything, nothing, all those warning signs were there. But like so many, we just go into work. We kind of love what we do. We hate going to work to do what we love to do. (laughs) How about that? And 16 years went by. Yep. Real fast. And yeah. In a flash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got it. But I stayed there because I loved our, customers, clients, and community. And I love the industry. So I just stayed with it, you know. Did you have any people over there that you could have possibly brought over? People as in Uh, employees? Yeah. No, we didn't have any at that time. For the last year and a half, two years, we didn't have any employees. Okay. So he was doing the front work and you were doing the back work? No. I was doing the front work. I was doing the back work. I was doing the middle work. And he was doing no work? He would answer phones sometimes, order parts when he felt like it, and did the work on half the cars, and I would finish up all the jobs that he did. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we've got a picture of this. You're not going to ever repeat this in your life. You're on here to tell the partnership how they go bad and what to do about it story. Mm-hmm. If we go much further, I think we're just going to be repeating your Mm-hmm. your passion to warn people. Okay. Yep. So be careful. Caveat emptor, buyer beware. Yes. Signatures, great questions, finding the commitment. Just because the person says the age gap, I'm not sure that that's a problem, but in your case, it obviously grew to be. Mm-hmm. It grew yep. to be. And next, the warning signs. Mm-hmm. The warning signs are, if you're intuitive, you feel it, it's not going to ever get better unless mm-hmm. there's a discussion. No, People rarely change the, the modus operandi that they have. And you, you got what you got and you just let it go on too long. Okay. Yep, yep. you got it. That's, that's behind us. <laughs> Looking forward, my friend, what plans do you have to make this a million dollar operation? <laughs> so currently right now, it's just me and myself working here all day, 60 hours a week. Right now, I'm just currently just setting up the shop how I want, getting all brand new tools slowly, one thing at a time, setting up a world-class independent repair shop, a clean repair shop, somebody that comes into the shop and is like, wow, this place is nice. I don't want it dirty or stingy or stinky or anything like that. So that's what I'm currently working on right this second, trying to build up my new clientele right now. 
And then in the future, probably next year, we will revisit possibly hiring somebody slowly and trying to build a good work culture that everybody is talking about. So that's what I'm working on right now over the next couple of years. You just said something I have to ask you, hire slowly. Yes. That means you're going to be careful hiring an individual. Okay. Yes. And if you find the right person, that person can do thousands of dollars a month, thousands of dollars a month Mm -hmm. for you. Oh, that absolutely. Helps, that helps a little bit. You're working together. You're still doing some of the front. It's exactly how so mm-hmm. many great shops started. Right. But you need a pair of hands if you want to commit mm-hmm. to getting volume in there that, that helps pay the bills. Absolutely. I'm involved with a couple of different auto shop owners groups, and we discuss things about business. And a lot right. of them, all of them tell me I need to be hiring somebody. I can't be just doing this on my own forever. And I fully agree with them. I'm not going to just shut that door of not hiring anybody because there may be a time where I get hurt and I may need help or Mm -hmm. there are days where I get tired and I just don't want to do anything. But that's a short-term future that I'm looking at over the next uh, two years. Yeah, you can only generate so much revenue. And then when the next person comes in and, and if they can step up to the plate and generate the same revenue you do, you've got to have the customers to support that individual and you're going to be uh, hurting for cash as you work mm-hmm. this thing up. Correct. Absolutely. Yep. So you're trying to save some money so that you got maybe X amount of months in the bank to cover mm-hmm. yourself. Uh, yes. That you can you can pay for the expense while you're building the revenue. Yes. Correct. Yep. Savings account. Put a little bit away each week. Things like that. Making sure my bills are paid. Making sure I'm able to pay the rent and things like that. And so far, I'm doing pretty good so far. So business plans, you said that Mm -hmm. you have all kinds of books that you helped outline that. Do you have a current and a new vision for your business? I do. Yes. My new vision, I'm renting out a really nice 5,000 square foot facility that everybody just absolutely loves. So I'm staying here right now currently for a good, you know, five or six years or so. I'm real good friends with the landlord here currently. I'm making sure that I pay my rent to him two days early every single month. I want to have good rapport with my landlord because he's got a plot of land right here on premises, right out front, that is not developed. It's just flat land. And I'm working on building a savings right now to where in the next eight to 10 years, work on trying to buy that land. And then in 12 years, I plan, which is 12 years from now, plan on building a really nice five bay single independent repair shop right out front facing the street. So that's what I'm working on for the next 12 years. So you're kind of off the street right now? I am back a little ways, two or 300 feet, not too far. How many bays? It's an open space, so three three lifts right now. Okay, not yeah. bad. Not yeah. bad. Obviously, you can fit someone in there, but you've got to mm-hmm. have... Yeah. You got to get to that revenue lift. Ever any thoughts of bringing on a coach, subject matter expert to help you just to get you you launched? Mm -hmm. There's um, a couple of coaches that I have talked to uh, before I started, but the one coaching company didn't want to bring me on because I did not have any employees. It was just me. And that's fine. I respect their business policy and things like that. A few other coaches were pretty expensive which I know they justify the cost of it, but I didn't want to take too many expenses on at a new business. Yeah. So I'll revisit that in about a year from now. Most of the coaches that I know, and I know a ton of them in the industry, they'd be more than happy. Hopefully they've, you know, you could pick up the phone and says, Hey, give me a half hour of your time. Here's my situation. You may find yourself five or six different ideas to set you up and And hey, you may even find out that so many of the coaches that I know say, listen, we start with an individual and in Mm -hmm. X amount of months, they've already paid for us and put a lot of money in the bank. But you can't do it by yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. That may just give you the boost to bring on that uh, that number two person for you. (laughs) It's a heavy lift. No doubt you've got the attitude. I'm so impressed with, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the right words that you continue to say on this episode. Courage. Yeah. Culture, solopreneur, family. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So 
I'm learning Great. different things each day of how to talk properly and more uh, professionally, you know. To your clients. I mean, yeah, yeah if yeah. you want to build loyalty and you want them to come in and, and pay the rate that you need to have in order to grow your business, mm -hmm. they've got to feel all kind. They have to have a great experience with you. And yes. it's, it's with not only a great, great work in the bays, mm -hmm. solving their problems, they have to know that they can trust you. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. It seems like you're a good person. Yeah. <laughs> Deliver a, a great trust. I mean, just, just listening to you, yeah. I would never, never worry about trust with the work that you would do for me. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. What else do we need to know as a solopreneur? What else is on your mind that, that people in the industry would love to hear? A lot of people think that this is a very easy journey or you're going to get rich overnight or it's a long journey. Like I heard Frank say, Frank, I forget his last name, Dag on it, but uh, it's like running a marathon. This is not like a very quick get rich. Not a game. sprint, baby. It's not, a, not sprint. a sprint. There you go. But you've got to love what you're doing in this industry and you got to work at it every single day. I think it's my friend, Frank Scandura, who may have there said that. Go. Yes, that's him. Yep. <laughs> you got it. Good guy. Good guy. And, yeah. and he's right. I mean, I, I think so many people want to jump in and tomorrow I'm going to be successful. And there's money problems, people problems, culture problems, cost issues, cross mm -hmm. profit issues, software issues. And shall I say, there's some new technology tomorrow that I have to go learn about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I'm doing now, too. Absolutely. Good for you. Hey, yeah. this was great. Yeah. I think this is a very succinct episode, short to the point. I would love, love to know, you know, check in with me every quarter. Just send me an email. This is Carm. Okay. Things are happening out here because uh, I think it would be really cool to be able to pick, catch up with you in six to nine months and see where the business is. Of course, it takes time to get where you want to mm -hmm. get to your yes. point. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll definitely do that. You got it. All right. Go home. Love yep. your family. Nate Winston. Yep. Winston's complete. Cayuga Falls, Ohio. Thanks so much for this yep. great insight. Yep. You got it. Thanks for having me.